are streaming. Let me double check my YouTube uh, stream health here quick because historically I have problems with that. So let's see. All right. Um, why is this updated, updated? Okay. Let me, let me check on my side, see if it's good. Yeah, it says live on my side, so I think we are all good. Hey, guys, can you hear us and see us okay? Let's good on mine. Yeah, all right, cool. So, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Another episode of Crypto Convos. Um, I've kind of gone over this, but my goal with this segment is to talk to people in the space and talk about why they got here, why the hell they're still here, and sort of just a feel for who they are, because we always talk about projects, but we don't ever really talk about people. So... Um, most of you know K-Dub. He doesn't really need an introduction. He's been on my channel a lot and vice versa, but he is the creator of the Crypto Zombie channel. If you haven't heard about it, go subscribe. Welcome, K-Dub. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, Alex. This is the first time I don't have to worry about, you know, dealing with technical difficulties and I actually get to wear these, wear these bad boys, like never get to wear them because they don't work with OBS. So yeah, no, it's a nightmare trying to get them to work. Take it from me. It took me like I spent a lot of time doing that. But uh, so give us some background information kind of on who you are. When's the first time you heard about crypto and how you got here? OK, so I'm sure a lot of people already know this from my channel. But for you guys out there, basically, I heard about well, I heard actually technically heard about Bitcoin way back in the day, like 2013. I was partying at a, you know, my friend, he's like, really into like technology. He's talking about this thing, Bitcoin. He's talking about you can mine it and it's going to be the future of money. And I think like at the time it was only like $8 or $11. And, and we're, we're all just like, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, hey, that, yeah, have fun losing all your money on that. You know, I'm going to go play some beer pong, right? Well, then lo and behold, um, the beginning of 2017, I'm, you know, I used to do marketing and stuff online. And um, I watched one of the guys that I work with, he actually paid somebody in Bitcoin. And I was like, wait a minute, people actually accept this stuff? Like, what are you talking about? I remember I heard about this years ago. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, this stuff is real. It's, it's, it's currency. It's been going, you know, it's been gaining in value. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I bought a little bit, like very little bit. Like I think it was like a couple hundred bucks or something. Um, and didn't really think much of it. Went, you know, was at my day job, came back. And all of a sudden, like a couple weeks later, I'm like, whoa, the price went up. Yep. So that was when I was like, all right, well, where can I find more information on this? Coin market cap. I saw all those cryptos. I just literally couldn't sleep, started researching blockchain tech, um, how distributed ledger works, what nodes are, and oh my God, it's smart contracts. And it was just like two weeks of like my brain was, uh, yeah, and <laughs> here we are, man. I mean, it's, I think everyone watching went through the same thing, right? I mean, it's pretty yeah. much. I mean, so, I went through my phases and I've told everybody this a thousand times, but I started trying to trade. That was not good and totally not a good idea for me. And then it was kind of the same thing, like, all right, picking what I like to do and then finding out stuff that I thought was interesting and just kind of immersing myself in it. And that's, I mean, sort of how I started the channel anyways. But so how long after that did you decide to start making content and why? Like, why on earth would you decide to spend so much time making videos? Honest, it, there was no like secret conspiracy behind why I started a channel. It was just I had nothing to do because I, I, people who don't know, I'm not really I mean, I've always been into tech, but I'm not a tech person like as far as a developer. You know, I was actually a blue collar worker. I used to work for my family's business for 12 plus years. You know, my dad started a landscaping company back in 1982. So it's a really I mean, we're like the biggest in the area. So it, it was just kind of you fell into it. Right. And, you know, I kind of had some fallout with the family. You know how it is working for the family. Yeah. And we don't work in the wintertime because if it's not snowing, you don't have anything to do. And I literally got bored and was like, I want to just talk about crypto because I th see this is the thing. When I first got into cryptocurrency, one of the hardest things for me was keeping up with how fast paced it was. Because yeah. as a person that was working a nine to five there's no way to, to be able to actually figure out all the things that are going on in crypto because it happens at lightning speed. Yes. So I said to myself, you know, wouldn't it be cool to create a channel that sort of does all the research sort of for you, like, and tells you what's going on during the day. And that's where crypto zombie came out. And the idea was, you know, like zombies eat brains and a crypto zombie can't, you know, it, it needs to constantly be consuming crypto. And that was the initial concept. And I think it's 470 videos later, you know, here we are. So that's the story, basically. Yeah, that's unbelievable. It, it, it is, you know, your reference to nine to five and keeping up with news. That's quite literally the exact reason I never really did news on my channel. I've just recently started messing with it because I wanted to change up my content. But it's exactly that. I'd wake up in the morning. I'd go to work. By the time I get home, everything's already changed. And like everything that I maybe had read about three hours ago is outdated and no longer important. 
So I'm like, well, mm -hmm. how am I supposed to make videos if I'm at work all day? So yeah, that was kind of a pain. But um, so how how do you like handle how many videos are you making a week, like a day now? Two? Uh, no, actually, I cut back, believe it or not. I actually found that two videos a day um, was almost a little overwhelming. Yeah. It, it was, uh, you know, like, it's almost like I would just look for things. Like, I would I would put out my usual, you know, morning video where I talk about what's happening in crypto. And then I always wanted to kind of give people extra. So I would be reaching out, doing reviews, doing, you know, talking to projects. Sure. And I just found that, like, some of the, they just really didn't um, get the traction, I guess. So I found that if I just focused more of the content into packing it into just one really good video. You know what I'm saying? It seems to get better retention. Yeah, so, absolutely. But, but yeah, pretty much one video a day. I mean, sometimes like I took off Super Bowl Sunday, but before that I'd gone for a month straight. That's um, crazy. It, but I love it though. Yeah. I, I love it because I get to do what I like to do anyway, which is, you know, read articles and figure out what's going on. But now I just get to talk about it too. So well, it's I was kind talking of fun. About, like, when I did the, this with, um, Cameron from Crypto Daily, I had mentioned he's like, and he says it in his videos, he's like, it's kind of a joke. I name my channel Crypto Daily, but I make videos like every three days. It's not actually daily. And he said the same thing. It just, some days it's like, okay, well, maybe there's really nothing good to talk about or he's tired or whatever, and he's just not in the mood to do it. And so he doesn't. But you, it's like, for me, I find that sometimes I really don't want to make content. I'm just not in the mood. What do you do on those days? Like, do you have those days that you're just tired and you don't want to do it? Like, how do you push through that? I mean, like there's some days when you wake up and it's just like, it's either super, super, super boring. Like there's just nothing happening and you're just like, okay. Or, um, you know, sometimes you got it. Sometimes there's bad news, you know, yeah. like something bad will happen and then you got to be the guy to talk about it. And it sucks. Cause like everyone's portfolio is getting hit and you know, it's like everyone's pissed off. So yeah, there's definitely some days that I don't want to make the news, but, um, you know, I, I realized that when I first started the channel, I didn't realize that, you know, having any responsibility, I was just a dude, but now I realize that there are people that come to my channel daily so you know i feel like i owe it to to you guys to everybody watching personally like because i remember what it was like when like there wouldn't be crypto content you know like i would be at work and i'd have my head head headphones in listen and there'd be nothing to watch and i'd be like oh this sucks you know so i don't know i figure you can know there's always something to talk about even if it's just like facebook acquired this yeah. or you know there's always something in crypto even if it's a little story so so how do you pick your stuff is it like stuff that you are you, you think is going to be important stuff that you like because i find that for me i know that there's a lot of articles i'll see in passing i'm like this is probably important but for like the five that i choose to cover when i do do news it's mostly stuff that really piqued my interest that makes me interested enough to actually research it instead of just doing it out of obligation do you do stuff you like or just stuff you think people need to know <sighs> Uh, both. Okay. You know, um, I mean, I try to be uh, more objective than I guess I used to be, you know, because one of the biggest things I noticed looking back at my, uh, you know, because I've been doing it for over a year now, um, you know, when, when you're a younger channel and you don't really uh, care that as much, yeah. you, you are a lot more like opinionated, you know, and unfortunately, people take your opinion as financial advice, even though they shouldn't. <laughs> so I've, I've understood that responsibility. So I don't uh, really talk as much about specific projects unless it's things that everyone's talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, like the bit, the BitTorrent sale that was going on. I mean, that was literally, everyone was talking about it. It wasn't just my channel. So I felt that that was a relevant topic, but you'd be surprised. A lot of the stuff that really gets me started in the morning is because of my telegram group, yeah. like the crypto zombies telegram group. I mean, even though, you know, we have our arguments and it's like sometimes memes and shilling, there's some really good conversations in there and there's some really good, um, you know, things that get brought to light. So usually right, right, right in the morning, I actually check my telegram group and see what are you guys talking about? Cause it doesn't sleep. You know, we yeah. got guys from, you know, Europe and, uh, Asia and all these other places in there. So they, they, they kind of feed me the stuff that happened while I was sleeping. So it sort of gives me a jump start. So I got to thank the community actually. The internet that. is a wonderful thing, right? I mean, how cool is that? You've got people all over the world and you wake up and it's like, oh, you have everyone already talking about news and they've been talking all night because it's not night for them. And it's pretty awesome. I'm quite envious of the fact that your uh, Telegram is so active. My Discord used to be super active, and I think when the market dipped, I've noticed that there's a lot less people talking. So if you haven't joined his Telegram group, join it. And if you like yeah. Discord and you have it, join mine so that we have, uh, we have an influx of some new people. Yeah, I mean, you could tell like like there has been a little bit of a drop off in, in yeah. the um the vol the volume I guess of, of of conversation. It doesn't move as fast as it used to, but yeah. you could tell there's still like you know diehards uh, around. I mean, it's the bottom of the bottom right now, man. I mean, yeah. could we go lower? Probably, but obviously a lot of people left. A lot of people are just like screw this space. I have no interest. I need to move on with my life. 
Um, you know, I don't really, I, I guess I could, I could do that, but I went all in. So for everyone out there, you know, yeah, don't follow me. I literally went all in, but at the same time, I also really believe in this space and I stand by it. So I'm, I'm the type of person that likes to lead by example. And, you know, if I'm going to sit here and talk it, I might as well do it. So yeah, I'm right here with you guys, you know? When, yeah. No, I mean, that's pretty honorable though. I'm definitely not all in, but I have a very, a very, a much larger position in it than I expected to when I started, which was just kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, accumulating throughout the like year and a half now that I've been in the space. And it was actually, I was driving home and I was listening to um, Crypto Daily's newest video and he was saying that we just broke the record for the longest consecutive downturn of days. I guess in the past it was like 410. Now it's like 414 mm -hmm. or something. I mean, some people argue that technically that's not accurate only because we did touch that like 31 mark and bounce up. But I mean, guys, let's be realistic. I mean, the volume's so low right now. You know, if you follow, I, I don't, I haven't even looked at the charts actually, but if you see what's happening, it looks like it's going to do another one of those barts. Like, because we've actually gone <laughs> down and three, th I'm not, I don't even yeah. do, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, could just, you could just see it. Like we've done one big triangle, a medium triangle, a little triangle, yeah. and they pretty much are like fractals. And it looks like we're going to do another jump, a bar and a down again. So I don't, we might not, but we've already done it three times. So, you know, yeah, I and, wouldn't and expect the future has, or the past has a tendency to repeat itself. So, um, Crypto Don Juan, who we were actually just talking about. We were just talking chat, about him. Uh, tell K-Dub that they got me blocked from his telegram. Can you unblock me, please? LOL. What? Who blocked that? I, we, that must be a mistake, man. I'll, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. My yeah. bad, dude. I'm I figured, sorry I figured you would, you'd want to know that. <laughs> we were just talking actually, about how you yeah. Crypto Don Juan leaves all these comments and stuff, and he's very active, and we see him on stuff. We were giving him a lot of credit before we started recording, actually. Crypto Don Juan, I should have listened to you, man, when you were telling me to buy Digitex futures and I and I didn't listen to you, man. Oh my goodness, had I taken your advice. So um yeah, you know, there you go. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> so we'll get you uh, unblocked, listen, my guy. I'm not perfect. Yeah, and if any of my admin admins are watching, please unblock him. I don't know why Don is blocked. He's awesome. So Don Juan. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. So we kind of went over why news videos, you said because you felt like you just needed to make stuff in the space that people didn't have. Um and so your thumbnails, they pretty much blow my mind. How long does it take you and how how do you actually make them? Do you make a lot of the images yourself that are in them or do you find it? Like, what do you do? I do everything myself, which is crazy because I know there's a lot of other channels that have, you know, editors or sometimes there's two people that work on it. You know, I know there's a few out there that they trade off between different guys and they have, mm -hmm. I do it all myself. Um, and when it comes to the thumbnails, I don't know. I, I think it could, this is crazy. I've never even said this out loud. When I was a kid, I used to love making collages, okay. like, like literally like cutting things out of magazines because you know, this was like before like phones and, and, and Snapchat and all yeah, that yeah. stuff guys. So we, we had to actually like do stuff when yeah. we were bored. With glue so and scissors. Like, exactly. So I used to make these little um, like collages out of uh, magazines. And I think what happened was I started to, I, like I started making thumbnails and I think that that kind of is being shown now in the way that I used to do it. So what I like to do is I kind of take like, everything that's happening and sort of find like different pictures online and just yeah. smash it together. I, I don't know. That's, I really don't know, but I like making them. It's fun. Yeah, no, uh, because when I started making like little news thumbnails for myself, I'm like looking at mine and they were so like bland and I opened up your YouTube and I'm like, Oh, like I don't even understand. Like I wouldn't even know where to start because they look so intricate, but they all match and they all make sense. It's not like too much. Yeah, it's 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 crazy because you know like some people will say on YouTube uh, you know like all oh, like crazy thumbnails and crazy like clickbait titles and this and that and it's like listen guys like realistically speaking like I do like 15 articles a day. Yeah. Most of them are pretty boring, you know. <laughs> if you were to put a title that was like uh Coinbase allows PayPal in the uh uh w withdrawals in the UK and that was your title, right? Who would even watch the video because you just gave away the whole story yeah, in the title. Absolutely. So I mean, like the thing is, there's one thing to just like outright straight up just clickbait, and not even talk about what you talk about. And then there's another thing to kind of try to, you know, make an eye catching, um, you know, title and, and thumbnail, which I, I am guilty of. But I hope that once you get inside the video, you realize that it's actually like 25 to 30 minutes of solid quality. And we do we do cover what I spoke about. So well, that's the thing. Know, like I. I I've seen or I've heard you talk about how sometimes people will call it clickbait titles. And I disagree a hundred percent because like you said, you, you cover what you're talking about. That's the whole idea. And ultimately you're getting to the point, whether or not you make it like a fun title to get people interested, there's nothing wrong with that. Cause you're actually, that information is there. It's not like you're lying. 
Right. And I mean, let's be realistic. You know, I work really hard on these videos, guys. I mean, people think they like, like, honestly, like, I think people don't understand like how long it takes. Like everyone sees always just talking for 30 minutes in front of a news video. It's like, yeah, but like, I literally get up before the sun comes up. I, you know, I scour the telegram, different chats, obviously, you know, you check the reddits and and other places as well. Um, And, and obviously some of the news sources, even though you got to take them with a grain of salt, because you never know why they're talking about what they're talking about. So yeah, it takes, I mean, it could take me up to six hours, man, to put a video out. So I I want people to watch them, you know, it's like, it's a lot of work. Well, that's the thing. I don't think people realize, um, you know, obviously some of my videos are more intricate and time consuming than others. Like my reviews, which is part of the reason I haven't been doing them so much lately is because they're exhausting. I mean, it's only like maybe 30 minutes to actually record it, but it's a solid, easy four hours of editing, if not more, depending on with a project and if they have like if they have like marketing material and I can get like zip files off their website much easier but if I have to start searching for all of the visual aids that I use in the video it takes me hours it's crazy so I totally get uh your kind of frustration with or people not realize how long it takes you to make content I think that's like across the space it seems that no one really understands what goes into these videos but Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Like, like even when you see these like lifestyle vloggers, you know, that aren't even crypto related, it's funny because you see them on camera for like a couple minutes and they're out in nature or traveling the world or doing this. But what they don't show you is them going back and sitting there until 1030 at night, editing this tropical, amazing vacation. You know what I mean? Like it's just so much work in content creation. And And there is, yeah, you got to love what you do. I I do. I do. That's what makes it easy. I, I really genuinely like it. I think I don't think I would have been able to put up with this damn market if I didn't actually like. Oh no, I I agree with you. I mean, I I wouldn't still, I don't do things I don't like. That's just kind of my personality, unfortunately. So that's, it's fun, but also can be inconvenient if I don't like my job because then I end up not wanting to be there. But I do like making content and it is gratifying regardless of the market or not. Um, But it's also important, like, because you make very specific videos that you need to enjoy them. I do like this wide variety, which ends up kind of biting me in the ass because then I have to balance, okay, I did a review, now I have to do something else now, so that I have to try to keep it going, and it's kind of exhausting. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Danny gave us a super chat. Is that what it's called, super chat? Thanks, oh, nice. man. Um, let's see. So, so I know you said that your channel and crypto in general, you're all in, it's your primary job, your form of income. Has the bear market affected that at all? It's actually weird because I, I do stuff outside of crypto. So, um, if I, if I didn't have, uh, yeah, I mean like, like, well, people that watch my channel know that I have, uh, you know, I have an eBay account, which I've never given my name out and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but, um, I, you know, I sell vinyl records and posters. I've been doing this forever. I'm, I'm into music and collectibles and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's good money in that people, if you know how to flip the right, um, you know, records and, and it, they're not really posters. They're actually like limited prints, yeah. you know, like, like in stuff like that. Um, and the thing is, is there's guys in other countries that really can't get it. You know what I mean? So you pretty much just, you know, you, you buy like five or six of them and then you just, you know, sell them for a little bit of a premium, yeah. you know, and I've been, I've been doing that for years, man. And, um, I actually have a hundred percent rating on eBay and I've been doing it for really? over, over 10 years now. Yep. Very proud of that. So you should um, be very proud of that. That's like, like the highest level of levels in life. Like you can't, that's really, really difficult. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, especially like considering how easy it is to like get one person pissed off. Like I'm so delicate with the way I wrap it, putting it in bubble wrap, you know, like it's, it's uh. so, you know, that, and then plus on top of that, you know, um, I have other, other, other things I do as well on the side. So I'm good. You know, it's, uh, it, so apparently, it sucks. Well, but. It, I, well, I used to sell, like if I buy, like, let's say I, I bought last year, I bought a drone. If I buy the newer drone, I'll sell the older drone on eBay. So I have a good rating, but like, I don't end up ultimately making money. I'm just trying not to bankrupt myself, but eBay can be mm-hmm. very useful. And also if that's your form of income, that's kind of, kind of grueling to be, have to have to be doing that on top of making videos. Like I, I, I just don't know how you find the time and the day. It's only once energy. it's only once a week though. Like I only, uh-huh. I do auctions. So, I mean, I just, I, only one day out of the week I have to spend like, you know, maybe six hours, uh, actually doing the bot, you know, unless there's yeah. like something I got to buy. It's True. not as time consuming as you think it is actually. Cause they're auctions. So they run all week. I got really it. only have to do it once, once a week. So, well, hey. but I mean, there, there's, there's that. Plus I have, you know, other incomes as well, different rentals, you know, and stuff like that. So that's, you know, um, talk about my income. Money. 
for a while, I feel like. Um, also, you know, I have a girlfriend. She works too. Yeah, know, so yeah, she, uh, I, yeah. She, somebody she, was just just talking about that. We're actually so I didn't even read his super chat because I got sidetracked. Apparently, it's his birthday, so he wants us to wish him happy birthday. So happy birthday, Danny. Happy birthday, Danny. <laughs> um, Is it really so, his birthday? That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that like, he uh, said. He, what was the super chat? My oh, my birthday's on Saturday. I literally can't read. And I just want that handsome man on the right to wish me happy birthday is what he said. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Danny. I appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. So um, anything that you have your eye on in the near future you're excited about, like whether that's an event or a conference or projects or news or mainnet launches or anything <sighs> like. Excited for anything right now. Oh, oof. I don't know, man. You kind of like get desensitized to the markets. Like last year, everything excited me this year. I mean, it's got to be some really massively, incredibly good news to make me excited because, sure. I mean, it's almost at a point where nothing moves the price of Bitcoin, even the bad news. Like, the, like it used to be like good news, it mooned, bad news, it dumped. Now it's like good news, nothing, bad news, maybe down like 1%. Yep. It's like nothing even moves this damn thing. And, you know, I had a conversation with Crown the other day. He does technical analysis and I'm not like any, I, you know me, I'm, I don't really, I'm, yeah. I could draw like a triangle maybe. But um, he was talking to me, telling me, man, that, you know, the amount of like whale money that is coming in when it does come in and, and they buy, he's like, dude, your retail money is so insignificant. It's, it's almost like, unfortunately, you can't really do much. You almost just have to sit back and just wait until these freaking guys are done crashing the price to whatever they're comfortable with. And just as a retail investor, keep your eyes on it and just play their game with them. You know, just, you know, you can ride their wave, you know, yeah, and that's, no, know. that's, so I just tell everyone to be safe. You know, you can't really go wrong with dollar cost averaging. If you're okay with realizing that maybe that 10 or 20% of your check could be lower tomorrow. Yeah. But if you're okay with that, then long-term, I think everyone's going to be fine. I have no doubt in my mind, no doubt in my mind that we are going to see an astronomical price for Bitcoin in the future. But, you know, everybody wants it tomorrow and it's not realistic. It, there's no, there's not wow. a catalyst right now to, to get every, en enough people excited, yeah. you know, for, for it to move. So, I mean, to, to reference what you were saying about there being like no news fluctuations in price, the whole buy the rumor, sell the news thing isn't even real anymore. I mean, when I got into the space, it was like, we would see significant pumps in prices and then immediate drop-offs like the day after whatever it did or didn't happen. And it was like methodical, like you could predict it almost 100%, which is pretty crazy. But um, I actually had this conversation with my mother semi-recently because I was talking about, I'm like, oh, I have to do an interview, such and such time, whatever. Don't come in the apartment. Don't make noise. And she's like, all right. She's like, I can't believe you're still doing that stuff. Um, isn't crypto? I heard like Bitcoin's not doing well. I'm like, yeah, sure. The price is down. I'm like, but it's like anything else. It's going to come back. She goes, you really think so? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty certain, more certain about that than a lot of other things in my life is that crypto is going to come back. Why would there be all this infrastructure and building and SEC looking into it? I mean, if this thing was just a, you know, a dead flash in the pan, whatever you want to yeah. call it, they would have just, the U.S. would have just said, screw this. I mean, we have guys like Kraken and Coinbase operating, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So obviously there's people getting involved. You're seeing Fidelity and Backed. And I know that that's not like the decentralized dream of crypto. I get it, guys. But at the same time, you got to be realistic and realize there are so many people out there that are not going to get in the space unless they 100% know. I mean, I talk yep. to family members and friends that are like, dude, I'm not touching that until it's legit because I have a house and I have kids and I don't know what I'm getting into, you know, mm -hmm. so that we do need that side and um, you know, they're working on it. So if, if all this is happening and all this is, you know, infrastructure is being built, why is this just going to go to zero? I don't know. To me, it just seems like right now, this is the time for that accumulation. And there's, I think that a lot of guys are just looking to accumulate really with what's going on right now personally. So could we go lower? Yes. But um, I, I think we're going <laughs> to, I think next year is going to be amazing. To yeah, just say I, that, I, I hope so. Least. I mean, um, you know, something, something, not financial advice, something, whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, we could possibly go lower. Obviously, no one can predict that. I, I, I don't what, care what anybody says. Everybody's been predicting the bottom since the time I got into crypto. It's like everybody every day has a different bottom and I don't care to hear about it. But um, I do think that the prices are significantly lower than we expected them to be. And I do think that now is the time if you are going to accumulate you have a comfortable amount of money. You're not investing more than you're willing to lose and you're not putting yourself out. Again, not financial advice. Then fine. That's great. Then do it. I would because it's the, the prices are now. And as far as like talking about crypto not going anywhere, I mean, I just recently covered that Coinbase is allowing 
credit cards to buy crypto now, which I think is a terrible idea, but also it's going to be showing that now there's more, more avenues for people to be buying cryptocurrency, which I think kind of speaks to its growth and not so much. Wait, co Coinbase with credit cards or, or the Binance thing where they accepted it? Cause they were accepting it too. Me, um, cause guy, because I know for a while there were credit card companies that were saying like debit cards are one thing, but they were being like a lot of banks were saying like credit cards. No, because people were buying crypto on credit and then losing just, money. What did I just so. read it? Oh, you know what I think it is? Oh, this is so funny. So, um, I have to do, I'm covering the crypto news and history, whatever for the blockchain brief. And I think one of the articles was when Coinbase allowed credit card purchases, but since then they have cut them off in, for U.S. customers. So yeah, so I'm quoting something that's old. Thanks, that was good, Alex. Well done. No, it's it's all good. You 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 caught me off guard. I was yeah. like, did I miss it? Did, did are they allowing it back again? I was no. Like, when you crazy. made a face, I'm like, well, if he doesn't know, then clearly something's up. Um, but actually, good time to mindlessly shill something since we are here and uh, I brought it up already. If you guys don't know. We write for a really awesome newsletter. I probably shouldn't have used the word show because it's actually really quality content we love writing for, but go check it out. Uh, the link's in the description down below. We all write different articles every month. There's all kinds of news, um, technical analysis stuff, interviews. Uh, like this this month, I did an interview with um, one of the developers from the block that, which is pretty cool. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. You should go check it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like I, I like writing for the magazine. I mean, it's really I know it's not a magazine. It's like a newsletter, but it, it like to me it feels like, like a magazine. magazine. Yeah, yeah. Like that was the idea. I remember when we first had that idea about that. It was um, you know, you had so many guys out there. There were like these uh, like the Palm Beach Confidential, whatever oh, it is, the God, Satoshi. So I don't remember. Bad. And all these like um newsletters that were coming out, and and you had to pay like 150, 200 bucks to get like yeah. insider insider information on what coins we're going to pump and stuff like that or what what projects are good um and yeah i mean the whole idea behind this was um you know the the thing is like some of the guys that that have them out there for free they're free because a lot of the content in it is actually sponsored that's yeah, actually why it's free yeah yeah so um you know we were basically like why don't we just make something that's very family friendly almost uh kind of got like inspired by like mad magazine type vibes back in the day and i was just like you know like we need like a newsletter for someone just getting into crypto. Like your mom needs one, you know, so stuff like that. I mean, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great, it's a great, I love the newsletter. It's great. You oh, guys, you guys check it we forgot to mention uh, compared to everybody else, it's only $5 a month. So that's not a bad gig considering it's pretty. That was, that was, that was literally like we did the math and, and to have to like pay the editors and everything yeah. else that was like pretty much like, the cheapest you could offer something, yeah. you know, cause the editor is not going to edit for free. No, he's just not. No. So, I mean, that's the case, but I mean, as far as us, I just do it for fun. I mean, oh I no, I love it. I think it's great. I've taken on so many responsibilities within it and it's like one of my favorite things to do, honestly. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, you, you definitely took charge on that. I'll give it to you. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't actually have as much of creative uh, input as people think I do. So, you know, everybody, th it's really, I just write for the, 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 the thing. I mean, you do a lot of the work, so. Yeah, but you Absolutely. write for it and we need people to write. So, oh yeah, if you guys are, in, if anybody's interested and you have background in like a certain specific thing and you are interested in writing for us and you want to just do like a, a vanity article once or something like that, email me or whatever and we can talk it over. Um, so Yeah, man, it's like a community thing. So Absolutely. Yeah, it is, which is what I like. Um, so are you going to any conferences next year? It seems like people's consensus is no one seems to be going. I know I won't be going probably. What are you doing? Uh, I was I was actually considering going to Neo DevCon, and I told everybody this on my channel. And I've recently kind of decided, and it has nothing to do with Neo. I, you know, I like Neo as a project. I went to their first DevCon. I just I'm really tired of the conferences. I mean, last year I, I just honestly felt like I went to a lot of conferences. I I um I spent an, an ungodly amount of money that I really wish I didn't spend because I mean tick ticket like seriously, and. <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like I didn't really benefit as much from them as I could have. Sure. I mean, it's nice to, the one thing I like is, is meeting people in, in, in real life. That's cool. Being able to see someone that you've only ever seen on screen in real life. You know, you actually get to meet guys like ready, set crypto and realize just how big, how tall this dude is in real life. Yep. You know, like that's cool. But, um, I don't really get a lot of value out of them really. I mean, you know, I, I think now it's more of just, good for beginners to learn and stuff like that. But I think those days of like VCs kind of trying to get in on the next like coin and it's just, ugh, I don't know. Last year really left a bad taste in my mouth and it's, it's going to have to be a really 
really badass conference to really get me yeah. to go. And uh, the price also has to be fair because I'm not telling people to go to this conference where they got to pay $1,000, $2,000 to get in. No way. I can't justify that for myself and I can't justify that for anyone to go to a conference yeah. like I mean, that, like so. I'd love to absolutely love to go to consensus, but I'm not paying the price. Unless I'm going for free, like I get a press pass or somebody loves me enough to buy me a ticket, but I'm not I, – I, financially, I, it's not feasible for me to go. Like it's not even – like yeah. being cheap it's i'm not i can't i don't have the money to pay for it so it, it's crazy <laughs> what they charge for tickets for stuff like that yeah i'm not like a rich person i don't know what people think youtubers are like making out here like i, I so many people point their fingers at all these crypto influencers it's like guys we're like the like least influencers out there like yeah. like people really think that we have power we don't have power like I could put out the most fuddest of FUD video ever and I, it, or, or the most like hopium video ever. And I don't think it's going to change the price of any of the top cryptos no. whatsoever. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I got to do what I got to do to get by. And I just can't, I mean, like even what, um, you know, chain wise, they're doing like $20 tickets. Now that's something that like I can get behind, you know, like that's something that people yeah. could afford. Um, I mean, I went to one in Philly, which was actually really small. But the people there were nice. The, it was put together. There was actually presentations, and it was it was okay. And then I went to one, the one that we went to in New York, which was a disaster. Whatever that influencer award thing that we went to, which was horrendous. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was I was really barely there, so I I I, I don't want to take a stance either way. Yeah. I mean, I, I was only there for like a half hour, and it was just because I had to get home. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know those. I mean, as far as I know, those guys are cool with Busto and everything. I yeah. mean, like I said, I wasn't there. I wasn't there long. I think enough it was to their first opinion, one so. too, which is why it was such a mess. And I know the venue got moved last second, which was a problem too. But like, I just like you said, unless it's like some big badass, well put together, really valuable conference that's, I can maybe go with a press pass, then I'll go. Otherwise, I'm not going. Plus, damn, everything's yeah. expensive: travel, hotel, train, whatever, food. It's like it's too much money. Yeah, I mean, if you got if if the if they want to pay for me to to fly me out to the conference and pay for my plane ticket and pay for my pay for my hotel, then yeah, maybe I'll come. But yep. I don't think I don't think they're gonna do that. So yeah, no, probably not. No, and not unless um, you speak, at least. So um, <laughs> who wants to listen to me talk? What am I gonna? I got nothing. No, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'd probably pass out so, on stage anyway, so it wouldn't be great. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. Like, I've always just been an enthusiast. So for me, even if I went to a conference, I, I wouldn't want to be a speaker. You know what I mean? I'd rather be the guy talking about it to the crowd and, and having discussions than the guy up on the panel. No, I agree. You know, but, um, but I do like educating people, though. It's fun. Like, I like when people genuinely, like, they'll ask me, like, hey, man, you know, you, you still got a crypto thing, right? And then I get to, like, explain how blockchain yeah. works. That's cool. No, you know? it is cool. But it's, I mean, that's the whole I would think that that's the reason most, most – maybe not all, but most content creators got into the space is because they wanted to educate themselves and others. That's the whole concept. That's what YouTube is for. When you're looking for a tutorial for how to do something, like perfect example, I've been playing way more Zelda on my Switch than I care to admit in a public setting, like a lot. And I got stuck on a lot of things. And so what do I do? I go to YouTube and I get walkthrough tutorials. People go to YouTube for education. That's the whole idea. So exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know we, you do, you still do educational videos a lot. I, I, I don't do as many as, as, as I used to. Um, because the whole thing is like, I haven't really seen that. I've seen some new people come into the space, but I haven't seen it like really yeah. massively, you know? So until I really get that ultimate demand where I'm getting like five to 10 comments or something a day, like, mm -hmm. how does this work? How do I use it? Then I'll be like, okay, we got round two. Let's yeah. do it. You know? But right now it's a lot of just the OGs hanging out, you know, we're just sort of chilling. So yeah. I find the exact kind of thing. My like crypto 101 videos where I cover like fundamentals or like, what is a DAO or whatever? People don't really necessarily watch it. I know most when new people, most people come know. In, yeah. Yeah. When new people come in, they'll watch it. Um, but for now, that's why I'm trying to switch it up. Cause it's like, well, don't get me wrong. I don't do it for the views, but I, I like people engaging and having comments so that I can talk to people. Like I get frustrated when I've got no one. I'm like, all right, so I made a video. No one wants to talk to me about it. Like that stinks. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's honest the same way here, man. I mean, I, I I tell people all the time, it's it's the support from the viewers that keep me going. You know, comments like, oh, thanks so much for the update, dude. I really appreciate it. Like, yeah. people don't know what that does to me. Like, you know, that little comment of just like the appreciation, it's like, thank you. You know, it's it's nice to, to have that, uh, uh, what is it? I can't even think of the word I'm looking for. Mutual relationship with each other, I guess. You know? Like positive reinforcement. Yeah, I mean, it's all about community personally because they're like, and this is a topic that I do bring up a lot. And I think tribalism is going to happen no matter what. And, and, and it might be healthy in some sense. You know, you got to have that healthy competition. Yeah. But um, I think sometimes it gets really out of hand, like really out of hand to the point where, like, really out of hand. 
Like somebody's holding. Oh, who's coming in? I don't know. That's weird. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that that was weird, guys. Yeah, I don't know who that was, but we're not dealing with that now. Sorry, guys. Um, I forgot. Tribalism. I lost my of it can be difficult. Yes. Yeah, and like the thing is, is you'll literally see people out there now. If it's a blatant scam, I mean, yeah, you know, it's a scam. But I think there's a lot of projects out there that, um, and including myself, I used to judge them really hard. Yeah. Like these newer projects, they're not that bad. In fact, I actually think that the projects that are really remaining right now are a lot better quality. Even some of these, um, you know, startups that you're seeing are a lot better quality than, yeah. than than a lot of the crap you were getting, you know, at the end of 2017 and early 2018, which surprisingly were like. 25 30 xing and they were crap you know what i'm saying yeah. so uh yeah i don't I also know Wait, have I... a lot to do with the regulations in the space too though people are afraid now you know projects icos are not getting away with what they got away with last year and i think they're all very aware of that very acutely aware that the sec is at least i know only in the u.s that matters but other countries are you know either cutting regulations or adding regulations and so it's just a big big ball of uncertainty right now and so i think that's probably part of it which is why you know, STOs are such a cool thing in the future. When I had Mav on here from Ready Set Crypto, he went on like a tangent because he knows so much about it, which is really yeah, educational. He's... But mm -hmm. it's super, it's a super interesting little facet of crypto that's kind of being born out of the ICO negativity, I guess is the best way to put it. But I mean, even so, like, I don't think even just slapping on the term STO is, is going to mean the project's going to do well. No. I mean, you could take any of the tokens that, you know, got, that didn't do well last year and you know, now they're STOs. Are they going to do well? You know what I mean? Like what, like, like the, the thing is, is, um, a lot of these utility tokens, yeah, they're utility. And I understand the concept of gas on the network. I get it. Like, because you don't want to spam it. You don't want to have, yep. you know, imagine if there was no fees on Ethereum, you just execute as many smart contracts as you want and literally just clog the whole thing and just death spiral. I understand that. But some of the, some of the lower, um, you know, uh, cap projects that have really yet to prove themselves, it all, it really just is speculation. I mean, yeah, you're just holding it. Yeah. I mean, unless you're holding something like Neo or ontology, you know, that like pays you gas, which is an incentive or, I guess Tron is going to pay you, you're going to get BitTorn airdrops or something like that. I mean, a lot of the other tokens are just speculative, yep. you know, so. No, I know. And that's, you know, that unfortunately that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles. So one, one, uh, one project that I do like, um, actually, cause we were talking about Don Juan and we were talking about the Digitex futures. Um, and I'm not shilling it or anything like that, guys, you can, whatever you think, I'm just being realistic. I think Digitex futures actually recently has had some of the best utility use case for the simple fact that in order to actually trade on their futures platform, you have to use the token. They force you to use the token. There is no option. You know, you see some of these like wallets come out or some of the, like, you know, even like for example, I heard, you know, recently with like bread wallet, a lot of people are like, what's the purpose of the BRD token? Like I could just download the wallet and just use it. Right. So I think with something like Digitex where you literally have to will create Yep. value you know so i think models moving forward like this um there was this crazy one that just came out called bomb did you, did you hear about that bomb no. I, I i spoke about it about a week ago it's I, it's just an experiment it's not like anything serious but the thing is like every time you send bomb i guess like a portion of the total supply of bomb gets like literally just burned forever okay so the idea is the more you spend it it actually is like inflationary oh, that's like pivx pivx does that they burn all their transaction fees Oh, do they? I didn't even yep. know that. Yep. Oh, oh, there you go. So it's not really a unique concept. Then, yeah. So I it's guess. a deflationary currency, which I, I, to be, if I'm being like super honest, when I first started looking into projects, I looked into them and I'm like, they have a limitless supply. That's horrible. And I didn't understand the deflationary, like how it worked and how it would be helpful. And then as obviously I got better in the space, I'm like, oh, that's actually a really cool concept that they're using. So yeah, it's, it is cool. I mean, it, it really, like you said, it creates inflation, which yeah. are, Wait, did I say inflation? I meant to say deflation, guys. I'm sorry. I know. I think I said the wrong word. Inflation is what we do in the in the United States, and deflation is what Bitcoin does. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think I, I said the wrong word. I don't know if you, I, I didn't catch it, but usually I'm I, I don't. I might not have. Thing, so, oh, I'm just so used to it now. I, I, you know, I'll put out a 30 minute video and I'll, I'll mis mispronounce one word, and it's like a hundred comments. Like that's yeah. not how you say it. I'm oh, like, yeah, dude, I I'm get that all the time. I used to go back and like when I mess up a word in videos, I would go back and redo it. Now, like, I don't care. Don't care. Just going to go with it. Well, the other thing too is all the different names in the spaces. You're always talking about these guys from different countries and I can't pronounce the names. Half the time I just end up going this guy, this guy in the picture. Yeah. <laughs> he, he said or this. Or I just say, I'm going to botch this, but here we go. And I do it anyways. So yeah, I have some community questions for you now. 
So oh, Crypto boy. Terp from Twitter wants to know if you went back in time to talk to yourself the day before falling down the crypto rabbit hole, what three to five pearls of wisdom would you tell yourself? Nothing obvious like buy Bitcoin, um, but what else, what, what else would you say to yourself? Uh, well, I would, I, I mean, you want me to just be honest? Like, are you talking about me personally or just yeah, every, like, I think like, advice? Personally. like just me? Yeah. Oh, just me? If you were going to tell um, yourself well, something. Well, I would definitely tell myself, number one, to uh, be a little more realistic and rational about your money. Um, I got lucky. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like people think like, oh, like whatever. I mean, I just got lucky. You know, I, 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 I bought into Neo, um, which did really well. And then I went into, you know, uh, you know, ontology and icon, which did very well. Um, so I kind of rode a lot of waves and was able to actually keep my, you know, BTC value pretty high, which is good. Um, but yeah, I would, I definitely would tell myself to definitely have better risk management. Um, you know, take more profits, um, not, not get so emotionally attached to projects. Yep. Um, you know, there, I mean, I had made a video, uh, Eric wall had actually, um, posted on Twitter talking about, uh, Neo going down with their consensus nodes. And I just remember being so frustrated that day. I had to make a retaliation video and it was like Neo FUD. It's not dead. And I was just like, and I was so aggressive in that video. And I was like, dude, calm down, man. Yeah. Maybe the guy has a point. I mean, maybe he could be providing constructive criticism and maybe Neo should just look at this and, you know, you know, tweak it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So I just think like, um, people need to not be so, uh, in, in married to their, to their projects. Um, because that's when you lose money, when you, when you don't take profits and there's nothing wrong or with that. Like, I, yeah. Like I used to think it was a bad thing to do that, you know, or to, to, um, to like, like, how could I, how could I do this to my project? How could I not support them? Like, well, you know, did, did everyone else care when they dumped on you all throughout last yep. year? No. So <laughs> hopefully, you know, so that's, that, that's the number one thing I'd say. And I'd have to say from a little bit of a more of like a nefarious point of view, um, I'd say be more careful of the people that you meet in crypto and their secret intentions. Yep. And um, that's a good one. yeah, because, you know, being a crypto influencer, you find that in the beginning, it's all fun and, you know, you're just having fun. Then you start getting the emails, you start getting the, and you realize that there's a lot of people out there that they're not really your friend. They don't really care about you. They just want you to do something for them and you have a platform. So, Hey, talk about this, talk about that. So I would definitely, you know, say uh, to be a little more skeptical with the people that you meet in the space. Um, Cause you don't know their motives. I know that's very like, conspiracy Elusive. uh yeah but um I, I don't know i think that's pretty much for me personally uh other than that yeah just it's risk management you know no, the space is. is so young and i i just worry about people's money I, I don't want people to lose any more money i really don't last year was so tough i really want everyone to be able to make more uh just educated decisions do, yeah. do more due, due diligence you know don't just rely on something that a youtuber or a twitter person said sure. you know that's why I, I i just i try to stress as much as i can like seriously don't do this like i'll actually give an opinion and then say don't do this just just because like literally someone is just going to do it well that's you know? what i and, say too i'm like i and everything i know is self-taught self-learned uh, do not take my advice like maybe be interested in something that i say and then do your own research on it but don't take my advice i'm not like an expert i don't have any tech background i just like gadgets i like information and i like to read about new technology and that's led me here so I'm always trying to be very adamant about the fact that people should not like take what I say is like Bible, but you know, that's unfortunately you can't control everyone and people are going to do it no matter what. Yeah. I mean, the reality of the situation is there's really no crypto experts. I mean, even myself, I, I you feel like an expert after you've been through this. Cause you know, one year feels like 10 years, but yeah. there's no experts in this space. No one, no one knows what's going to happen. No one knows what the best coin is. No one knows if Ethereum or, 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 or Tron or EOS or Icon or Neo or Cardano, you know, we don't know what's going to be the one that's going to do it. You know what I mean? And I think it's, it, it's more important right now to, um, focus on building, you know, because that's all we can do right now. Not much happening with price. So either build if you're in the space or if you're just here to make some money, well, yeah, now's a great time to prepare for that, you know, eventual run up. So it's a great time to be in crypto right now. It was depressing leading up to it, but now that we're here, I like it. It's, it's a place that I'm proud to say that I've gone through, you know, and, yeah. no, um, I agree with you. I think yeah, it's definitely, 
If, if I had to, so I definitely just cut you off. Did you want to finish? No, I don't. No, no, no. I talk all day. Go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, I was going to say for me, if I had to tell myself like three things, it would be don't trade like ever. Just skip that whole part. <laughs> don't trade. Um, it would be a list of how I set up my camera gear and what I ended up buying so that I wouldn't spend like six months trial and erroring things. Um, so mine's less crypto related and more like. Yeah, you have like technical difficulties a lot. I don't time. know what. It's crazy it's bad sometimes. Luck. Um, and then it would probably be, I guess, be patient um, because I feel oh, like- Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I should have said in that. In like patient. all capacities, yeah. though, like price, content, people, comments, growth, everything. Just be patient because stuff, you know, stuff will come in, in when it's supposed to and, you know, it is what it is. Um, so Sabs from Twitter said Burger King, McDonald's, or KFC? I, I don't eat that, that stuff, so- You were on none. an island and you had to. Yeah, either McDonald's. Burger Burger King, McDonald's, or KFC. And I had to? Yep, you have no choice. Ugh. You're going to die. I don't know. I feel like Burger King is slightly more, maybe they, they I don't I don't trust McDonald's ingredients. So um, maybe Burger King, I guess, if I had to. Um, but yeah, I really, people would be surprised. I literally just don't, I, I make all my, my food at home. Yeah, I, I do you guys too. can see, I, I got my food, my, my fruits, my vegetables. I mean, I'm, I'm like totally like all about, you know, home uh, meals and stuff. Plus you save so much money. Like yep. once I started actually like making my own food at home, the, the grocery bill, I mean, not the grocery bill, the food bill, at least dropped like to a third of what it was. Yep, I do the same thing. I get so, um, Sun Basket, which like delivers ingredients to you. It's like the best thing ever. I do that and then I eat at work and I'm pretty much good to go. <laughs> On that topic though, speaking of, <laughs> we were talking about that. Is it true that like KFC has these like crazy like mutoid like chickens that have like no feathers and they're just like pumped with like, oh, I don't know, like I, I, I really I, hope I've not. heard some stories about that and I don't know if it's true or not, but I saw some like maybe it could, it could be fake pictures online, but ugh, just yeah, gross no. me out. No. So the only reason yeah. I would say McDonald's is because I ate it as a kid. So it's like one of those foods that like, obviously if you guys don't know already, I'm a dietitian. So I eat really healthy is just like by trade. So I don't eat takeout or I don't eat fast food. But if I was going to like once a year, I might go to McDonald's and that would be the choice for me. I used to be double quarter pounder with cheese fiend as a kid. I don't know what it was about that. I used to get that all the time. My um, go-to <laughs> is a double cheeseburger with Big Mac sauce on it. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's terrible, I mean, I, but it's good. Yeah. I mean, we, it, I don't think anyone on here needs to be convinced that that food's actually, no, you know. it's disgusting. Good. So <laughs> Not bad. Um, out of all, I don't know who wrote, who asked this, but um, out of all the possible catalysts that we're waiting for to get out of this bear market, what do you feel will have the biggest impact in the crypto market to get the ball rolling again? The biggest impact? <laughs> you want to know my honest answer? Yeah. Um, just when price uh, gets high enough again, even if it has to crawl our way back. And I know, and I know, I understand the question you're saying, no, 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 but I'm talking about the catalyst that makes the price go up. That's what you're saying. I get it. But I actually think that we're going to have a very slow grind. I think, I don't, I don't think we're going to parabolically run up. But what I think is going to happen is people that are hearing that Bitcoin is around 3000 now, and maybe take another dip or whatever. I think once we start to reach back up to like those 10 K levels and yeah. stuff, I think that's when everyone's going to start. Cause it's I price. That's what, that's what got everyone in in the first place. Yeah. So I, I really don't think an institution, like the institutions coming in, they might give it a push. You know, like I think it'll give it like a nudge, but I really seriously think that just until the price literally just attracts people again, so they can buy at the all time high again, <laughs> um, we're really not going to see it. And I think we need to get back to like 10K or something to really catch people's attention. And yep. then, and then you'll see that retail money come back in again. So, yep, no, um, I, but, I but, but who knows? I mean, who knows the answer personally? I don't know. I think, I think it's going to be a little bit of the hype. I think FOMO is, has way more effect on the market than we give it credit for. And I, I, I do think that, um, you know, the issues with, uh, the issue that we had in the past with everything going down, people pull their, mo their money out. So if price is going up, people are going to continue putting money in. At least that's kind of what I think. Um, oh, no. Does it saying the stream? No, it's saying my stream is resumed. I guess I'm having tech issues now. Oh, goody. All right. So we'll do one more question, and then I'm probably going to have to stop because it looks like it's freezing. Um, oh, I just... Is, is it frozen? I don't know. I, I didn't have it up on my channel. I'm going to look and see how it looks on my phone. This is a nightmare. Oh, yeah, it looks like we're f we're frozen a bit, but um, I think you could still hear us. But, I mean, we've been doing this for about... Well, yeah, I guess maybe... What's the key to happiness? 